Yeah. All yours. All Good yours. Morning. Uh, well, <laughs> the set of data are not exactly very pretty, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I would say that it still showed that the domestic demand is uh, currently pretty weak, mm. and it does warrant more policy easing. So as the surprise interest rate cut this morning seems to be suggesting, policymakers are concerned and they want to make a gesture. Ten basis points is almost like not a big deal, right? Mm. Uh, it's a small gesture, but at least uh, it shows that they care. Um, but if you look at the IP, for example, industrial production, that seems to be much weaker. And at the time when you know exports were still holding up relatively okay, that seems to be suggesting that domestic demand is particularly weak. At the same time, retail sales, I think that's a bigger miss compared to, uh, to FAI and also IP. And this is saying that consumer demand is very, uh, you know, very vulnerable at the moment, and it does require more stimulus. So it, it doesn't seem that, well, one pillar to your point was exports. Right, industrial right. production. It doesn't seem well. That's going to go away because of the slowdown happening, and you're already seeing signs of that now. What? Do, where, where do you see growth now? Full year with this. I mean, just ballpark, really, of where you think you might need to revise your forecasts. <laughs> Our annual forecast currently is standing at uh, was real GDP forecast mm. at 3.5 uh, percent. Mm. So first half was a 2.5 because we had a 4.8 and a 0.4. Yeah. But then in the second half, we're expecting a close to 4 percent in the third quarter, a close to 5 percent in the in the fourth quarter. So in a way, this has still has some assumptions based on the fact that we are expecting a reopening uh, after the completion of the 20th Communist Party Congress in October. If that does happen, I would say that there is a good chance we still get a 3.5 percent for the full, full year. Okay, that's a that's a big assumption, Helen. And I, and I wonder the fact that we saw these policy cuts here today. Sh should I assume that the PBOC, you know, in terms of priorities and what's on their agenda is supporting growth still the big theme well, it certainly is. The PPOC has uh, very important policy targets that includes a growth stability, uh, you know, job market uh, growth, as well as uh, inflation stability. But at the moment, I would say that their current priority should be shifting definitely more towards the growth supporting part. Uh, but if judged by the uh, the, 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 the uh, third quarter monetary policy report that was released last week, it seems that they still have some lingering concerns about structural inflation. Well, in our view, Core CPI inflation is already as low as 0.8 percent, even lower than what we see in Japan. I don't know why that we still have to be so worried about inflation at a time when domestic demand is so weak. So it's good to see that they're finally cutting a bit, uh, despite the fact that uh, the you know the U.S. is still hiking. So should I be worried about capital flows, outflows increasing then that pressure? Well, I would say that at the moment, uh, you know, judged by the most recent empirical uh, uh, evidence, there doesn't seem to be, you know, a lot, lot to worry about. At the time when current account surplus is still at an all-time high uh, because of the very high trade surplus. And the, uh, the ones that we have seen in the past few months were so high, and in our view, is much caused by the recessionary, uh, you know, uh, in, in pressure from within the China. The message ban is too weak, and imports was actually uh, um, extremely uh, weak and that was the reason why that we end up with a very high trade surplus and current account surplus and at the same time very little pressure in uh, in FX clearance uh, in settlement and therefore I don't necessarily think that even if China cuts rates we're going to see too much pressure on on the exchange rate front uh, I want to ask your thoughts about property and what they do about this obviously private investment is falling you see that with prices themselves falling is there a magic pill and how long do you think we'll be in this sort of boat before we see some semblance of a recovery well, I'm afraid that we're not expecting any, you know, silver bullet to be uh, taken at the moment. In fact, we think that the central government is most likely going to stay still uh, while encouraging local governments to help more with the uh, Baojiaofang, ensuring the delivery yeah. of those unfinished projects. So under such circumstances, unfortunately, I think the best that we can expect is probably the ongoing construction of residential properties in picking up the pace a little bit mm. in the near term. But in the medium to long term, 
term, I'm afraid that the you know the home sales and also the land sales may not necessarily see too much improvement. And therefore, we are hoping that there could be more top-down measures uh, coming from the central government, and uh, hopefully we can see a little bit of uh, improvement, you know, with uh, with more confidence coming back mm -hmm. after the uh, the completion of the CPC, so that we can have a better picture. That may include, for example, the establishment of a stabilization fund. Why, why do you think that is? Why do you think we haven't seen more forceful measures from the central government? I think that's a key nuance here. Well, I think the central government is still very much, uh, you know, holding on to the idea that if housing is for residential purposes, not for speculative pur purposes. It's mm. called Fang mm. Chu This has been in place since 2016, and President Xi has been sticking to this particular, pre you know, uh, principle for a very long time. So even at a time when you are looking at the the, uh, the property market you know, uh, turmoil going as far as uh, what we saw recently. CBIRC, PBOC, Mohurt, everyone is still very much starting their response yeah. with the same principle. And under that principle, does it, does it mean that they could do more from the central government's perspective? In our view, they should and they could. But uh, at the moment, we still have seen very little.